When we're applying to jobs and trying to find our next career, it is easy to develop tunnel vision. We feel like we're the best qualified, and when we get rejected, it's a shock. When I get rejected, I have to stop and think. I'm not the only military veteran applying to this job. I'm not the only person with an MBA that's applying to this job. There are people that have more skills, more experiences than I do. I'm competing, you're competing, we're competing with over a thousand other people. It's unrealistic to always think that you're gonna be the best qualified, that you should always get referred, you should always get interviewed, and you should always get the job. When you apply to an online job board or US jobs.gov you're a number just like everyone else you have to do the same things to be competitive you have to have a strong federal resume you have to be able to speak your value while you're getting interviewed you have to be able to speak and communicate that to that person you also need to consider building and forming relationships by networking so that you are more of a known quantity I get it you're investing time, you're investing effort, you're putting yourself out there, but you're competing with a lot more people than you probably imagine. And you have to have that perseverance, that persistence, where you're going to overcome failure, overcome rejections, and keep applying, keep looking for that next opportunity. Here's another question. What are you doing to make yourself stand out more from the competition? Do you know when you lay your head down at night to go to sleep, there are thousands of people in this country that have the goal of being a GS-14 or a GS-15 or an executive in the government or whatever job, whatever dream job you think that you want. There are people out there that are moving closer to that goal because they're reading the books, because they're taking the online courses, because they're developing and forming the relationships that are needed in order to give themselves an edge and to actually earn and attain that job. Try this. If you haven't before, try this. It's not a popular concept, but try to blame yourself first, no matter what the failure, no matter what the rejection. So you don't get the job, try to blame yourself. You don't, you don't succeed in the interview, try to blame yourself. What did I do? Maybe I wasn't able to communicate effectively. Maybe I didn't rehearse as well as I should have. You don't get referred, Blame yourself, look at that resume again, and find where the shortcomings are. Have someone else look at it, strengthen it, tweak it, change it. This may seem crazy, but if it's you, if you're the one to blame, you can change you. We can change us, but we can't do anything to all these other people. We can't make them change, but we can change what we're doing. And a lot of times when you find error, when you find failure, you have a component of responsibility in there laying somewhere. If you dig deep enough, you can find an area where, hey, yeah, you know what? Maybe I could have done this better. I could have done that better. You can find that, you can control that, you can change that. In the year 2030, you're going to be eight years older. I'm going to be eight years older. We're all going to be eight years older. But will you be any closer to your goal? Whatever that may be. Are you moving? Are you moving towards that goal? What you do today and what you do tomorrow is going to impact how close or if you achieve that goal at all. You're going to be eight years older anyway. Might as well put forth the effort and go ahead and attain that goal. If you think Getting a six-figure job is easy. That it should just be on a platter and someone should hand it to you. You're going to be disappointed. You're going to be disappointed this year and probably for the rest of your life. Because we're not really entitled to anything, right? I come from a military background. And you'd be surprised a lot of veterans, they had that mentality like, I should be able to attain a GS-13 or a GS-14 just because I wore the uniform. That's wrong. Nobody cares about you as much as you care about yourself. You are the hero in your story. I'm the hero in my story, right? So the people around you, you just subconsciously feel that these are, these are the supporting cast. These are the supporting characters. But your arc of your story, that's your responsibility. And if you're just sitting around watching Netflix, playing video games, that's not going to move the needle forward. That's going to make you feel fine in the moment, but that's not doing anything to move you closer to your goals. Okay, so, so then I get these comments, right? I get these comments, I applied 100 times and I can't get anything. I applied 200 times and I got rejected all 200 times. <laughs> you have to do something different. 
You don't just give up. You don't just say the system's broken and walk away. You do something different. These same type of individuals that tell me they applied so many times, if I pull their resume, if I'm able to look at their resume, dozens of errors, almost guaranteed. They're gonna have things misformatted, misspelled. They're not gonna quantify information, but they're taking that same garbage resume and they're applying and they're applying and they're getting frustrated to the point where they wanna quit. Here's another one. This is BS, you can do all that stuff and still not get a job. Yeah, you can do all of this stuff and still not get, of course you can, right? But is that gonna stop you? You keep doing the stuff. You keep improving the resume, the networking, putting yourself out there, persistence, quantity, quality, push, push, push. You keep doing that stuff until the door opens or you kick the door down because it all comes down to how bad do you want it? Right? If this is just something that you want to do on the side and it's not that big of a deal, you, you might not want it that bad. There's this story I want to share real quick. There's this man who finds a billionaire. He tells, hey, how can I be successful? Right? And the billionaire is like, hey, meet me out at the beach tomorrow at 6 a.m. and I'm going to give you the secret. So the young man shows up, old man's at the beach, and they start walking into the water. They walk in about 12, 24 inches, and the young man tells the billionaire, he's like, hey, when are we going to start learning? And the old man's like, hey, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen real soon. Just come with me, just follow me, walk with me. So they walk in probably about three feet, four feet high, and then they get to the point where the water's at the neck, right right by, right by, below the chin, and the water's moving because it's an ocean. And then they take a few more steps, a couple more inches, and then the old man submerges the young man's head underneath the water, and he's holding it there. Young man's thrashing, trying to get out. He can't breathe. And then finally, after about 20 seconds or so, the old man releases him, and the young man, he's spitting up water. He's red. He's upset. He's like, why did you do that? What's going on? You're crazy. You're crazy, man. And then when they got back out to the surf, the old man looks at him and says, when I held you underwater, what did you want more than anything in this world? And the young man says, I wanted to be able to breathe. I wanted oxygen in my lungs. And the old man then returns and says, when you want your goals as much as you wanted that oxygen in your lungs, that is when you will find true success. When your desire reaches that level where you want it so incredibly bad that you're willing to do almost anything for it, that is the drive that you need to have to reach those lofty high goals that a lot of us have. So you might've heard the story before, I just wanted to share it with you again. All right, if you want it, it's out there for you to get, but you have to put the work in. So go out there and get it.